For decades, world trade has been dominated by the U.S. dollar, and as a result, this has given the U.S. government unprecedented power and influence on every country in the world. Even China is not immune to the dollar's dominance in our world economy. But something very interesting has been developing over the past few months. The U.S. dollar has surged in value to its highest level in years, all while the pound, euro, Japanese yen, and even the Chinese renminbi have reached new lows. As this Bloomberg article indicates, the strong dollar is wreaking havoc globally. But something is about to change as China and Russia have a long-term plan to reduce dollar dominance and allow other currencies to replace U.S. dollar hegemony. In 1999, the U.S. dollar had a 71% market share amongst global reserve currencies. But in the past 10 years, it has dropped down to 59%. And in the next 10 years, if China and Russia's plan work, we might see a new global reserve currency appear. So what is this master plan of Russia and China to reverse the trend of U.S. dollar dominance? And what are the best strategies to safeguard your investments during this unprecedented time of geopolitical conflict. Today's video is brought to you by Masterworks.io, and I'm going to be answering both of those questions in today's episode. To better understand this China-Russia strategy, we must first understand why the U.S. dollar is so powerful and why it has monopoly status amongst the reserve currencies. The first reason is that the U.S. dollar is a currency of trust. Let's say that two random countries like Peru and Nigeria want to trade with each other. Because their local currencies could fluctuate significantly, both nations would prefer to use a more stable currency for international trade. The United States dollar is more stable and less volatile, thereby allowing both countries to feel more comfortable doing business. Nearly 80% of world trade is conducted in U.S. dollars. The second reason most countries prefer U.S. dollars is because it's the only currency that allows you to buy oil from Saudi Arabia. In 1945, the U.S. government made a strategic deal with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to protect Saudi in exchange that the kingdom will only sell its most precious commodity in U.S. dollar. And the final reason is the SWIFT banking system that was created after World War II and now dominates all worldwide financial transactions. Currently, SWIFT is used in over 200 countries and 11,000 institutions around the globe. But tensions between Russia, China, and the United States are escalating rapidly. China is upset with the United States for their support of Taiwan, and Russia is now the most sanctioned country in the world. Since Russia has been sanctioned by the U.S., Russia is not able to to use its U.S. dollar reserves. And at the same time, most Russian companies and banks have been removed from the SWIFT network, limiting their abilities to trade with other nations. The West believes that they can continue to sanction and cut off Russia from the world. Eventually, Putin will give up his war on Ukraine. But Russia has one strategic advantage that is making this scenario difficult to come true. Russia has extreme leverage over Europe and the world, as they are one of the world's largest oil and gas producers. So even though Saudi Arabia and other countries are using dollars to sell oil, Putin is forcing countries to buy rubles to purchase oil and gas from Russia. So despite European countries uniting together and standing for Ukraine in this ongoing war, many of them have had to swallow their pride and at the same time purchase Russian rubles to pay for oil and gas. At the same time, China has its own leverage with the Belt and Road Initiative. As I've covered extensively on this channel, China's BRI is a $3.2 trillion project entailing China giving out generous loans to countries around the world. China's BRI project has been so dominant in the future development of our world that currently there are 165 nations around the world who owe a collective debt of $385 billion to China. Now, some of these countries have taken on too much debt and find themselves in a difficult position to pay back. According to a new report, 42 nations owe China debts that exceed 10% of their GDP. Now, this gives China a tremendous amount of leverage, and this is where China has an amazing opportunity to change the future of global reserve currencies. To encourage more of these nations to use the Chinese Chinese renminbi in trading, China could start asking these countries to take and pay back loans in Chinese yuan instead of the U.S. dollar. To ensure that countries would choose this option, China could incentivize them by giving them a 1% discount on their debt. Let's see how this would play out in real life. Take a country like Pakistan, for example, that currently owes China more than $24 billion in debt. A 1% discount on $24 billion would be a huge deal for Pakistan. And China has been planning this move for many years. As of 2018, the Bank of Pakistan has allowed yuan-based trading with China. Other countries have also followed suit, including Myanmar, Cambodia, and of course, Russia. And the final piece to this puzzle is the colossal shift in world trade these past 30 years. At the turn of the century, only a handful of countries in Africa and the Middle East counted China as their largest trading partner. Fast forward to today, and now most of the world depends on China and counts China as their largest and most important trading partner. So with the combination of debt and trade, China could pressure many countries around 
around the world to use renminbi over the United States dollar. Now, one of the big criticisms of this potential plan is that most of these nations in debt to China are very poor or are developing countries. What about the big superpower economies of Europe and other American allies? Is there any chance that China could use its leverage and force some of the biggest and most powerful economies in the world to start using more Chinese renminbi? China has a chance and they can do it through bilateral currency swap agreements. We've already seen agreements like this unfold in recent months with Indian companies swapping US dollars for Asian currencies to purchase Russian coal. And if you've never heard of a bilateral currency swap agreement, this is exactly what it is. It's essentially an agreement between two central banks to simply swap their currencies. The central banks then take the proceeds of this swap and gives them to commercial banks within their economy, providing the country and local businesses temporary liquidity in a foreign currencies. You might be thinking, what are the advantage to these currency swap agreements? Well, one of the biggest is that both countries now don't need to rely on the US dollar for trading. And this is where things get very interesting. To date, China's government has signed more than 3 trillion yuan worth of bilateral currency swap deals with more than 40 countries around the globe, including some of the biggest economies in the world. China has signed a 400 billion yuan each currency swap with both Hong Kong and South Korea, 350 billion yuan each with the Bank of England and the European Central Bank, 300 billion yuan with Singapore, and an additional 150 billion yuan with Russia. Although 59% of the world's currency reserves are held in US dollar, there is now a real chance that China and Russia can use its leverage and change the future of world reserve currencies. In addition, there is another interesting story that has been largely overlooked by most of Western media, and that is the fact that China and Russia have been stockpiling gold for the last decade, with China purchasing over 112 tons of gold alone in the last two months. China has also been securing more gold from Russia, with imports rising a historic 750% in the month of July alone. This is a big story because there have been rumors that Moscow and Beijing could potentially one day link their currencies to gold, much like the United States did before Richard Nixon took the US dollar off the gold standard in 1971. In closing, with the dollar becoming more powerful, it's very difficult for everyone who has money invested in this market. For example, the S&P lost 8% last month when Bloomberg reported there is a 98% chance that we are looking at an upcoming recession. Simply put, it didn't matter how diversified your portfolio was. Almost all stocks have been affected. But as we conclude today's video, I want to share with you a new modern approach to diversifying your portfolio. You see, just last week, Goldman Sachs released a shocking report saying the classic stock bond strategy won't be enough to keep investors afloat. Take a look at this graph and you'll see that it's down over 20% this year alone. As a result, Goldman Sachs says the ideal allocation for stocks has shrunk from 60% down to around 45%. So what do they recommend you do with that difference in order to salvage your returns? Invest in real assets like art. They say it can not only protect your purchasing power, but the last time inflation was this high, it appreciated more than real estate and even gold at an unheard rate of 33% year on average. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, Masterworks is today's video sponsor, and they are a unique platform that allows you to invest in contemporary art by legends like Picasso and Banksy, but for a fraction of the full price. When they sell a painting you're invested in, you see a share of potential profits. So far, Masterworks has had six exits for an average net return of 29% to investors. One of those exits was as recently as August for an incredible 33.1% return. Honestly speaking, I've been working with Masterworks for most of 2022, and they have been an incredible company to work with. For years, art investing has been reserved for only the richest and elitist members of society. But Masterworks is allowing average investors like you and me the chance to invest in truly incredible investment vehicles. Diversity is the key to every healthy investment. Currently, there is a wait list to join the investment program at Masterworks, but you can skip this wait list and learn learn more today by simply clicking the link in the description below. Everyone, I hope you enjoy today's presentation. My name is Cyrus Jansen. If this is your first video of mine that you've watched, make sure you hit that subscribe button, drop me a comment down below, and thank you for spending time with me today on YouTube, and I look forward to seeing you all in next week's episode.